that day, but I had had much to grow the pod for about a year. So you five knew, days a week. Did uh -huh. you were you aware? I knew her personally. Yeah. She was a friend of mine and had been a friend since my law school days. Yeah. Her office, uh, the Montgomery Fair where she worked, was a block and a half from my office. And we would meet every day. She woke up to my office and we talked about everything. Segregation to youth and everything else. And we talked on that day. She has written a part of what happened that day in our last conversation. I'm the last person who really had anything to do with the movement who talked with her before her arrest. And she knew that I was going to be out of town that evening because I told her I was going to be out. But Mrs. Parks was secretary, and I mentioned this to the group that I had dinner with on last evening. Uh, uh, so she knew what to, what to do because we had talked about it. And she knew if I wasn't available exactly what to do. But it took a lot of planning and really, and I appreciate what John said. And, uh, and really when you look at the movement now, lawyers basically have been written out of the whole picture. They talk about the marches, they talk about the speeches, and these things were important. It was very important. But the thing that changed the landscape of this nation was the court decrees, those federal court orders. And what Judge Johnson did early on was added the federal government as a party to it, and he had them to know that I'm not going to enter this order unless the federal government enforces it. So you had to have plaintiffs, and when people became plaintiffs in these, these cases, we tried to select persons who were less vulnerable, so they would not be... Uh, uh, there wouldn't be reprisals. Then you had to have lawyers. And the way the South kept this whole business out was to keep the lawyers from handling the cases. And in Alabama, until recently, we just had reciprocity. And the reason we didn't have reciprocity was to keep outside lawyers from coming in to handle these cases. And then you had to have federal judges. But the Montgomery situation, unlike what people think, it took a great deal of planning. And the two persons who really planned the details of the Montgomery bus boycott was Joanne Robinson and Fred Gray. And it occurred after Ms. Parks was arrested that day and after I had a call from her and went by and talked with her and she told me she wanted me to represent her. I went by then and talked to E.D. Nixon, Mr. Civil Rights, because uh, all of us, and then I left his place and went to Joanne Robinson. And we sat in her living room the evening of the first and the morning of the second and set out the details of it. And many of those details are set out in my book, Let the Bus Ride to Justice. And if I can stay out of courts and stay out of my office and stay away from making speeches like this, I'm going to write the rest of the story about what happened on December 1st and before that time.